gather the jewels home. Then cheer, my brother, cheer. Our trials will soon be o'er. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon that golden shore. Yes. 
And I'm thinking, and I'm really thinking, Brother Danny, that this is probably the best I've even heard him do. It was so good. Yeah. And then I started listening, and you know, these sermons are, are good. They're just real practical and down to earth. And uh, I got to thinking, I said, well, he's, he does such a good job in the church. I wonder how come I don't do quite that good a job in, in, in my Sunday school lesson. And I got to figure it out. He has me a microphone. His microphone sounds better than mine. <laughs> Mason said, I'm wearing his microphone this morning. I got confidence. <laughs> I put it on by accident, Brother Danny, but I wouldn't about to take it off. It's so hard to get more just stuff. So I'll be sure I give it back to you. All right, take your Bible and turn to the book of uh, James. The book of James. We'll read the text from James and we'll uh, see that everything going here. We'll have it just a minute. You'll have a up there. But we'll read our text. We're looking at a subject, a great subject, and something that I think sometimes, no matter how old you are, I remember when I became a pastor back there, right back in the back of the church, I realized I needed to improve my prayer life. And I remember telling the Lord that I felt like I was in kindergarten, a school of prayer kindergarten. I just felt like I, there were so many great, great people of prayer, and I didn't feel like I was one of those great people. I still kind of sometimes feel like I'm in kindergarten. <laughs> but I've seen the Lord do a lot through prayer. Let me ask you this, where would some of you be if it had not been the answer to the Lord's prayers? Amen. Prayer is, is, is crucial. So it's, it's a crucial subject with that. And uh, I want to read the beginning in the book of James with the uh, concerning prayer, uh, chapter 5, verse 16, if you want to turn with us. Verse number 16, chapter 5 of James. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one, one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. And then listen, he gives kind of an exhortation, then he gives us an example. Elias was a man subject to like uh, passions as we were. A man with, he's a man like we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, when you read that passage, there's an encouraging thing. If Elijah could pray and God withhold rain for three and a half years and send the rain, what the what the writer and what the Lord, if he can do it, he's a man of like passion, he's just like you. Yeah. Just an ordinary individual. But through prayer, he was uh, able to see great things. And, and uh, I look back on my life, like I said, with this lesson again. Then I, I also looked at my life. Uh, if, if, I'm going to say, if you're actually, if you're just one of the best prayer warriors in the world, and, you know, then, then raise your hand, and, and you know, and most of us probably would not raise our hand. We, we, we understand the importance of prayer, but we feel like sometimes we, we certainly could improve. And when I did this lesson, it reminded me of some areas I could improve in. And uh, I'm sure we'll all have, so I hope this will do this for you. But we're looking at the subject of, of prayer, and... Uh, a factual, and I title this, I like to put a title to it, a factual fervent prayer, by the way the Bible said, of a much. And we're going to look at some things about prayer uh, this morning. Uh, prayer is lesson number five in the, the, this uh, book of Richard Rowe. We're going to look at some things. First of all, by way of introduction, I, I kind of titled my section of the book different. The first section of the book I had was that you might gain. We talked about assurance of salvation. And you certainly gain by having assurance of salvation. We talked about that four lessons. There, because if, if you don't know right now if you die, you go to heaven, you need to settle that. And that's the number one. Amen. Number one. You know, get baptized is important. Going to church is important. Uh, Bible reading is important. Prayer is important. But you don't want to die lost. And, and I got saved as a very religious man. In fact, I was thinking back when I was really a young boy. My faith in God was absolute. I mean, I believed God could do anything. And I believed all the Bible taught. I just never have received Christ as my personal Savior. But uh, uh, the Bible says you lust and, and have not. You kill the desire to have and cannot attain. We fight and war yet you have not because why? You ask, you ask not. And it's speaking of prayer. We do not petition heaven for the things we have need of. And then it says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. To you. For every one that asks it, what? Receive it. And he, he, 
He that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh it shall be opened. So we got a lot of encouragements to pray. And how many of y'all have seen the things happen in your life you just knew it was prayer, it was all prayer? I think all of us have this day, right? All of us have. We prayed. And then I've seen some things even in my work situation, Brother Chuck, I had a tax return, been laid on my desk for 100 years, it felt like. Uh, and I couldn't get it off. And it was a big, big return. And it had 100 moving parts. And it involved uh, lots of money, you know. And uh, one you don't want to make a mistake on. And I, I was waiting on one little bit of piece of information to get it off. And I waited and I waited and I waited. All of a sudden, this big uh, additional income comes in. The man notifies us, hey, I got this. And we're not talking about, we're talking about big income that you couldn't leave off the tax return. Well, had I got it through before, I mean, it, it, it went with that. Then the IRS looked over here at what they said this man got and what we reported would have been it showed more on that particular statement than I had on the whole return. You know, I mean, big. And then, you know, still waiting on information, still waiting on information. The Bible says, confess your faults one another. John, I'm confessing to you. And uh, then I wrote my guy back, and, uh, I, and I, I texted him back, and I, the, the, the stock broke. I said, I still need this information. Well, then I got... Uh, I think another big source of income came in. I mean, I had the book. Big income. Was, 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 was bigger than some of the income, bigger than the other. And, some, some of the, and I got a second statement. And then the man wrote me back and said, Well, I'm sending you this email I'd already sent. And somehow it slipped, that email slipped through. I, I sent on the answers for a month and a half. If I had not sent on the answers, we'd have sent a return in terrible. You know what I thought about the church? God's really good. And even when it's not, man, God just looks at it. By the way, that's what I'm confessing. John, I actually had that email with a little bit of stock inflation. He'd seen it. You know how they stack on each other when you send them one to be on one? You, know, you get your answer. You got the way you say it, then the answer kind of stacks up, brother, and then separate come, come, coming in. But what I'm saying is, God works in our life like that. And He certainly does that in answer to prayer. Uh, so we, it's, it's essentially, and, and, and the introduction was like I said, we, we, what we might gain, and then that we might grow, especially our entire left cause of, how many of y'all believe that through the Bible you grow? That is a special food, and you grow up. Then this one is, I use this, but I, it is true, but I won't say it's much more than this. How do you get things from God? You ask. You ask. And it can be spiritual things you ask for, more wisdom, patience. Uh, so, uh, so this is a, uh, and then uh, the, the the purpose of our lesson was is how a, a fervent, uh, a faithful, a fervent prayer. The purpose of this lesson teaches how to pray more effectively that you better receive the things you have need of. And we're gonna look at four things that will help you pray more effectively this morning. Uh, that really, when I went back over, them, was a help to me, and honestly, it worked. So uh, the first th thing that we need to know that will help us to pray more effectively is the privilege of prayer. Now, I'm going to go a little flat on this, probably. Oh, oh Brother Danny's laughing. Oh, no, I don't have my man to stop and rescue me. <laughs> but well, what sinners really like this prayer, I'm not, well, they don't have a regular prayer like that. They can't, and I'm going to show you why. <laughs> First of all, it says, Now we know that God here is not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, who is not a will, him, uh, we want all those things that sinners got a prayer line to heaven. If I called up one of your parents, if I called up, uh, and, I, and I know both John's parents, and I've been uh, knowing your parents, Sarah, for a long, when they were really young. You know, always young, you about your age. If I called him up and said, I want this and I want that, he'd say, Brother Melvin, I love you. And I, I like you, maybe love you. I think he'd say love you. But I'm not your daddy. <laughs> you know, Sarah can call him up. And, and so we don't, we, the relationship we have, the, the sinners like that, and so they don't have that. And then it says, what's well, another reason that God doesn't, they don't really have that privilege? The Bible says that if I regard sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I'm a lost man, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to regard sin in my heart. And so forth, therefore, the Lord won't hear me. Uh, but but uh, let him ask in faith, nothing wavered, but he didn't waver. And then it, if I don't even have not even believed on Jesus as that He's the Savior, how can I be a man of faith? I like faith, Brother Chuck, 
I got sin, unconfessed sin, iniquity in my heart, and uh, uh, so God, I just, I don't have that privilege. That's not my privilege. I, by the way, how many of y'all called up uh, uh, Joe Biden this week talk with him? What do you mean you didn't want to? <laughs> but anyway, you couldn't, could you? But we can actually talk to God with the Chuck. Isn't that amazing? Uh, uh, because we have this relationship. The saints have this privilege. Uh, number one, relationship, our Father which are in heaven. Then it said, Behold what man of love the Father has bestowed of us, and we should be sons. When you're a child of God, you get his attention. I mean, he, he's glad to communicate. You can pray. He's glad to hear from you. Uh, and, and, I, and I tell people this, too. When I, I run into people sometimes that may not, Hey, Miss I'm glad you could come this morning. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, uh, you know when we, we 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 have this privilege of prayer, we're able to go to God in prayer. Now, if we got unconfessed sin, then it, it can hurt us too. Hurt us too. But uh, we have a relationship. The whole amount of love the Father has upon us that we should be called sons of God. And I for children, we're a child of God. And God, the whole. In fact, He actually says, "Pass the pass what He what He gives the." Uh, what we call the Lord's Prayer there in the book of Matthew, he starts talking about what what son if he asked of his father. That's the illustration he uses. And so we have this a relationship with uh, our Father which are in heaven. And then the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man is about much. If I really want to have my prayers answered, I'm going to have to get right with God. I, I, the Bible says if I regard a new prayer. So I, I'm going to have to. But a righteous man, now, number one, what's a righteous man? He's got to be a saved man, ain't he, Brother Chuck? You've got to be saved. You can't be righteous without being saved. So then we've got, we've got this great privilege. And uh, it's one we probably don't use as much as we should. If I asked you again, but I, I won't ask you right now, if I said, uh, if you're a great prayer warrior, raise your hand. Most of us would I, I wouldn't raise my hand, Brother Chuck. I don't feel, they are, they've been some preachers that I've known. Oh, I have a great prayer voice. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. Jerry, you know who it is. Miss Doris. Miss Doris Fowler. Now, was she a woman in prayer? Yeah, yeah. If I had something to pray about, I'm going to see Miss Doris. <laughs> I mean, there didn't be some men like that, too. Uh, Edgar Thomas, I remember one time he'd be coming down the steps of the church, I'd walk up. And he, somebody said they, they he, he kept, he, they spent the night on his house. They said, well, how'd you sleep? He said, I couldn't sleep. Edgar Thomas was up praying all night. <laughs> That's a good thing to accuse of. You could feel the presence of God. That's how you get that power. It's through, it's through prayer. And of course, it delights God that we, we have that kind of prayer life. Uh, I, I've got children. I've got three. i got some I don't hear from a lot. And I didn't call call my God that mine. I've got some that I do. And let me just tell you, and grandchildren, you're closer to the ones you constantly have contact on. You you love them all, but who are you closest to? If I'm going to have a close relationship, it's going to be because I spend some time in prayer. So uh, two classes of people. We have, let's say this one, we have the privilege of prayer. If you don't pray, it's not God's fault. He's given you that privilege. So that's the great thing about prayer. Uh, we have a privilege, and it's not everybody has that. Then there's two important promises that I like. Uh, the first one, I, 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 and there are more than two, but I, these two especially I point. Well, if I pray, is there any, what does the Bible say about my praying, Brother Chuck? Now, if I had one of the good illustrations like Brother Chuck, you'd remember it forever. But anyway, <laughs> uh, call promise. Uh, and, and most of you, Jeremiah 33, 30, most of you probably know it. Call on the me. What does it say? It's an invitation. Call on the me. Pray on the me. And I will answer thee. And then he even goes beyond that and showed thee great and mighty things which I know it's not. Have you ever prayed for one thing it didn't happen and something even better happened? Again and again. Uh, we call on the Lord and he shows us great. We got an invitation to call. He says he will answer thee and, and show thee great and mighty things. So I call that the call one. If I'll call on the Lord, will he answer me? Yes. I'm invited. You know, to call them. And he'll show me great my honey. Second one I call the confident promise. <clears throat> You'll see why. And this is the confidence. Okay, there it is, but it's just confidence. <laughs> that we have in him. 
that if we ask anything according to his will, uh, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petition that we desire of him. I don't pray like this. I guess my flesh sometimes might think, Devil, do you pray and think, well, I'm asking God for this, but he just ain't going to do it. Well, he probably won't if we pray like that. But we've got to believe. Now, if God chooses not to do it, it's, it's in his wisdom, or especially to wait a while. Y'all ever have that happen? You pray, but it didn't happen right away. But eventually, what you prayed about happened. So, uh, I, I could, I, I buy, first he invites me to call, and call, and I'll answer. But he, then he said, I could have this confidence. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have a petition that we desire him. Now, of course, the qualifying thing is praying in the will of God. You know, praying in the will of God. I had a good friend, and he, he attended him for a while, something that's about Larry White. He was praying God would send him a beautiful girl. <laughs> and I guess that's not bad. <laughs> John must be praying to have that right, John. You shake your head right now. You hear that word, brother. <laughs> he wanted John, John kind of picky. He wanted a pretty girl that was real spiritual. John, did God answer that prayer? In fact, he actually brought y'all together right here living within miles of each other. And both of them praying that same prayer. Did, didn't God do good with John, sir? His answer is yes, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So there, there you see we, we, we've got these important promises that encourage us to pray. Third thing is two categories of principles. I call one the hindrance principles and uh, the iniquity principle. Now, if I am saved, but I have sin in my life, and equal in my heart, that I'm not going, I'm, I'm not, not getting, I'm, I'm not getting it shred by the trucks. There's none of us without sin, but we have to confess it and get it right. If I got sin and I'm just, you know, one of the pet sins you don't want to get rid of, then that's a hindrance. What will hinder my prayers? A nickel in my heart. In fact, it says if I regard a nickel in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So there's a hindrance to prayer. Second one is a faithfulness principle found in James. About a lot of things of James on prayer. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavered. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven wind. Well, let that man. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. You've got to believe that God hears and answers prayer. You've got to believe when you pray. But now, all of you guilty, I'm sure. Have you ever prayed and the Lord answered the prayer? And it'd be so phenomenal. You just almost you say, I can't believe he did that. And then you say, ah, that's a wonder he did it. But you really, you really did have faith in it, but you were so astonished when he answered your prayer. And some of these things are really big things that the Lord has done. Brother Chuck, did you really deserve the Lord to be that good to you all these years? No. But wasn't he good to you? Like Brother Wilson? Done a great thing for us. And then there's a failure of uh, uh, principle. If you, if you, uh, yet you have not because you what? Yes. You ask not. Uh, so failure to pray. Hinders prayer. But here's that principle. Faithful. This is James Perkle. Ask in faith, nothing away from Let me ask you a question. Theoretical. A theoretical story. I mean, of course, I, I like it this morning. I like to hear about each other. But here's the theoretical question. If I ask God, Brother Chad, if I ask God for a million dollars, that'd be a good retirement program, wouldn't it? For me. But Brother Chad might even retire. He got that, but, but anyway. Could God do it? Yes, he could. Could God send any one of us a million dollars? Yeah, yeah I believe we could, Brother Chuck. Uh, I'll ride by when they got that mega, mega power ball, all that stuff. They have 196 million. And I remind them, I say, Lord, I don't want 196, but I sure would like a million. <laughs> I won't be greedy. <laughs> by the way, I ain't gotten that yet. That's <laughs> something y'all know. <laughs> if I did, I'd be so smiling, you'd know what would happen anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, Faith principle, asking faith nothing and wavering, fervency principle, a factual fervent prayer. Now that's probably most of our problem. Now, Lord, just bless me, I need this and I need that. If you was preaching, they'd go sleep on you. You're not passionate, you're just you're not praying a prayer, you're saying a prayer. Oh, when you say, Oh God, oh God, and you pour out your heart, that's fervent. Yeah. And we failed, you know, that's an area we need to work on, we all need to work on. What about your lost loved ones? 
mm -hmm. I should be right. Yeah. Fire right. So uh, Fervor said, pray for with, 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 with all your heart. Righteous principle of a righteous man, no matter how much. So if I'm trying to live before the Lord, and uh, I make a face for fervent prayer, then he'll obey But then he gave me the example of Elijah, who prayed, being a man like us, of like passion, and God held him reign up in heaven three and a half years. Amazing. Uh, the practice of prayer, and I'm going through this pretty quick this morning, that's okay. Two important things. <coughs> and, and this is what I really want to stress. Brother Melton, after 40 years of preaching, what are some of the things that you have found that you would stress about prayer? Now, all the elements we went over are important. You understand that? You need a place. Jesus said, to be, be not like the, the Pharisees standing on the street corner, but go into a closet to pray privately. If you do not have a place that you go to on a regular basis in your home, we just shut that door, get away from the distraction, and if you don't have that, you need it. Miss, Miss Sheila had a chair. And we finally had to throw my chair away, and I really hated to. Uh, well, uh, but anyway, and I had these cushions, and I'd get down there in my study, and I'd lean over Brother Chuck, but I'm kind of getting old, so I had these two cushions, and I put it down. I could, but I, I tell you, it, it, it is the greatest place in the world. When I got in my prayer closet, it was heaven. I had a, I have a designated place of prayer. And, and, and let me confess, Brother Melvin, do you go there as much as you should? No. Especially, I got, that's the area I got to improve in. Yeah. Brother Melton, Brother Melton, you sure need to do that more. <laughs> <what> <laughs> hey, you should be right. Uh, uh, and he will play in a circle of place, and the Bible says, enter into that closet. Find you, uh, when Daniel prayed in the Bible, do you reckon he had a certain place he prayed? He opened, he opened the windows toward Jerusalem, didn't he? He prayed those three times, got cast in front. If I could, if I could, he said, Brother Melton, if you could leave me anything, that you want to leave me when the Lord calls you home about prayer. Get you a designated place and go there. Okay? Uh, no distraction. But I pray all the time. I pray about this. She don't play driving down the road. I know she does. But I hope she don't close her eyes in that long time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember we got a law because you can't look at cell phones now because it's distracted driving? Yeah. Most of us are guilty of distracted praying. Watching TV, riding down the road, praying. That's not. In fact, how do I say this? I'm going to get in trouble. Brother Chuck, I like to talk to you. But if I'm talking to you and you got your cell phone out, watching your cell phone and scrolling while I'm talking, that's rude, brother. <laughs> you know, yeah. And yet, husband and wife, I seen a man up there, let me see him. Uh, he's in line, had his four or five year old with him, another four or five year old's hand. He is scrolling. He is scrolling. We're paying that child no attention. None at all. And uh, so he goes through the lot, and his wife's waiting on him. She comes back up back. He sits down on the table, and he scrolls again. He ain't paying his family no attention. Distracted. We do that in our prayer life. Is that, would that be rude if you're trying to talk to God and you're distracted yeah. doing nothing? It'd be rude, wouldn't it? So, so we don't want to be distracted. That's the prayer closet. It has a place where you can pray on not being distracted. Second thing is a period of prayer. You need to set aside a certain portion of the day where you just get down on your knees and you talk to the Lord with a faithful, fervent prayer. So you want, you want a regular period of prayer. And, of course, uh, uh, when you pray, does that mean if you happen to? No. You're going to be a regular period of prayer. And, uh, and Luke, by the way, I won't go to Luke these, these words. Uh, Luke 11 is the Lord's Prayer. And uh, Luke 11, in fact, it's, uh, <coughs> the disciples said, John taught his disciples to pray, pray teach us to pray, John taught his disciples, and then Jesus gave them the Lord's Prayer. But this is, I put years and years ago, too. The greatest faith among God's people is faith in prayer. Now I'm going to give you a good example. And I'm convinced of this. If every one of you, just the ones here today now, just you. If you would every day from now until it happens, Miss Sheila, get down in your prayer spot and just say, Oh God, we need a revival. Oh God! Calvary Baptist Church to revival. We got a lost community that died and going to hell. Oh God, oh God, oh God. If we would all do that, 
day to day basis. How many of y'all believe we'd see it revival? Yeah. I absolutely do. I do too. I think we would. See what lack of prayer cost us? Uh, I pray for power of the preacher. I mean, Brother Danny doesn't talk. There's something called unction. Brother Danny and I was wondering if you meant. I gotta be quick. I'm, I'm okay. I love Brother John Jackson. Can we all know yes. Brother John? Amen. But Brother John was not a homiletic outline person. To be honest with you, I've heard better sermons. I don't know a better person, but I've heard better sermons. Brother John would go preach, and a crowd of 15, five would get saved. So what? You said his sermon wasn't good. He had what we call Holy Ghost Gospel. I mean, when we preach, into the water, something. Mm -hmm. God would move and work, and unsaved people, and saved people get right. And we get up here, uh, Brother Danny, uh, and I'm using both of us. I get up there and preach a great sermon. Well, if I borrow one of his, I get. But anyway, I can preach a good sermon. And it's almost like I'm an entertainer. Oh, we enjoy it, but nobody knows <coughs> about it. You understand what I'm saying? The purpose of preaching is to change lives, isn't it? But that takes that Holy Ghost function. We have to have that by, by prayer. So those things you have to have. I'll just quickly get the questions. Uh, I'll quit. Number one, what's essential to receive things you have need of? Prayer. Prayer. Number two, the purpose of the lesson is to teach you how to pray what more what? Effectively. Effectively. Pray more effectively. The first thing you need to know to pray more effectively is about the what? Privilege. Privilege of prayer. Sinners lack this privilege because the scripture states God fears not the what prayer? Sinners. Sinners pray. Saints have this a privilege because of number one, the relationship. The relationship and Father, affectional prayers of what kind of man? Righteous. Right, righteous man. The second thing you need to know to pray more effectively is about the what of prayer. Promise. Promises. Call unto me. Uh, you have this conference, okay? Well, the first promise is found in Jeremiah 33, which is a what? Call. Call. The second promise found in 1 John 5, 14, 15, which is a what? Confidence. Confidence. The third thing you need to know to pray more effectively is the what? Uh, principles. Pray. Principle. The first category of principles is the what? Hindrance. Prin hindrance, which keeps us, hinders us from getting our prayers answered. Second category is the help, help principle, which helps help us get our prayer answered. The fourth thing you need to know to pray more effectively is about the what or what? Practice of prayer, which includes a regular what? Place. Place and a regular what? And a period. what? Period. Period. All right, question coming. 1007. It's never happened before. I used his microphone. So All right, let's pray. Father, Lord, impress upon our heart the truth and prayer. Father, we could, we could absolutely could see revival with you. Lord, just every one of us gathered here today would find a place of prayer on the and, and, and daily begin to say, Dear God, we're not reaching our neighborhood. And Lord, love, Lord, I got loved ones. Father, let's have a revival. Father, send a great revival to Calvary Baptist Church. I'm convinced we can see great things. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for the promises of prayer, Lord, for all that you do to us. And that's the prayer of Christ's name. Amen. Amen. John, I get 10 points.